Okay, we just posted our first exercise, which was our introduction to compositing and image mining, finding resources from online. We're going to take it a slightly different direction for exercise two. This is our second exercise. That will be the end of exercises. Then we move on to creative assignments, portfolio projects. For exercise two, we're going to get a quick introduction to vectors in a very non-intimidating way. Because some of you have used vector programs. Most of you have not. Vectors are the opposite of line art. Vectors are shapes. And you create images by layering up shapes. And one of the most common places you'll see vectors in a digital landscape is with emojis. So for this exercise, you're going to create your own custom emoji. But we're going to do one intermediary step. Instead of just creating something out of nothing, we're going to first get guided by a little online emoji maker. It's very much like a pit crew, but with emoji parts. Right? Because there are basic vectors, and then there are more complex vectors. You can choose the same theme that you used for your jumble. So if you chose Batman for your jumble, you can use Batman for your emoji. If you chose green eggs and ham for your jumble, you can choose a character from that or just a green egg for your emoji, right? I chose Charlie Parker plays Bebop. I don't know if I want to do Charlie Parker as an emoji, but there's a cat in it. I might do the cat. You'll see what I mean. Or I could do a barbecued leg bone. That's also in the story. Whatever relates. You get to make that decision. Here is our overview. That's definitely if you want kind of background on the, the project without me explaining it to you. You can read through all that. We start, these are past examples, we start by using this online tool to make an emoji. And then we learn how to use in Photopea the vector shapes to create our own version of it, right? And then we can keep working on that version until we're happy with it. So we don't need to stop with the basic flat shapes of the emoji maker. We can add patterns, we can add texture, we can add uh, lighting effects. But what we do need to do is keep everything as a vector. This image shows you, this is kind of my process image, this was doing an orc from Lord of the Rings. Um, it shows you how vectors are different than pixel-based images. They are traced by what's called a path. And that path is either filled in or not filled in, outlined or not outlined. And those paths are like cutouts of construction paper that you layer on top of each other to make your image. Here are some past student examples. We had a Lord of, no, we didn't have a Lord of the Flies. We had an animal farm, right? This could be an animal farm emoji. It would be funny if someone's favorite children's book was Animal Farm. That would be a dark childhood. So you could stick with a band book theme. You can stick with your ch favorite children's book theme or your favorite comic, cartoon, what have you. But what are emojis? Emojis are basically just simple flat shapes that are layered up on top of each other. They are done that way so that they take up very little memory and can be shown on a messaging screen just like text is. There are emoji keyboards just like there are text-based keyboards, and text is also a vector. Like every form of T from every different typeface is just a vector shape. That allows you to do different point sizes, and then that T will always look clean, no matter how big you make it. Same thing with emojis. You can post them big, you can post them small. They'll always be clean, no matter how high def your screen. So here are some professional examples using what's called flat graphic design. And then this is an example of something called flat 2.0, where you take the flat graphics of basic emojis or graphics with vectors, and then you add a light source, you add some shading, some gradients, which we're also able to do with what are called layer styles on top of the vectors. And so we have the fox in two ways, we have the paper airplane in two ways. And you'll see app uh, icons you know, go between these two styles. But why do we use this kind of flat graphic style like Andy Warhol did with his portrait of Marilyn Monroe? We use it because it communicates very clearly, like a street sign. And that's how emojis are meant to work. So the first thing we're going to do, we pick our theme. 
You can choose a new theme if you want. If you're sick of working with what you did last time, you can pick a new one. If you want a banned book, you can choose that. Once you have your theme, you're going to go to Emoji Maker. And then you're going to click. Just get used to this program. It's really, really limited. Just click on this, and you'll see it will give you a randomly generated face or emoji over and over again. When they look empty, that's because they're using a color that matches their background, which is a bad choice design-wise. But what we want to do is actually just play with these until it kind of gets maybe close to what you're thinking of. Ooh, I should have stayed with that one because it was a cat. And if you want to do some searching, like I'll go to my Google image search and search for the cat. In Charlie Parker plays Bebop book. This might be way too long a tag, but look at the images. And there's the cat, at least from the back. There's a nice image. I wish I had the book with me. But it's a cat that looks like my cat. So it's, it would be fun to do an emoji of my cat. But I've done that before, so I want to do a slightly different one. So this is what I'm going to work on. So this is my reference. There's a repeated phrase in the children's book, never leave your cat alone. And if that's the only image I get of it, so be it. So you might find your own references. Okay, if we build this from the very beginning, let's just delete. If you click on the trash can, it will go back to your basics. So the first thing you choose is your base color. This is like your, your single biggest cutout out of paper. It's your single biggest vector shape. Here are all of your options. So if I'm doing a cat, it makes sense to do that. Now in Emoji Maker, I can't change the color. It just doesn't give me that option. But when I make it my own emoji, of course I can change the color and change it to what I want. Okay, next, you can only choose one of these. Some of them are more complicated to replicate than others. But they'll all teach you a lot about making your own vector shapes. So if I choose this one, now I move on to eyes. Now this is where it gets a little interesting because I can choose one set of eyes, but I can't move them anywhere just for this stage. Just like a, a pick crew, it just doesn't allow me many editing tools. But what I can do is I can add multiple eyes on this step. Thinking that, well, these combination of shapes could be interesting. Seems like those are the exact same. But anyway, all right. And you can even do kind of weird things, right? And you don't need to worry if it's super clean or not. You're going to be working on it. Now, here's a good thing to show you. As you click different ones, they'll be darkened. So you'll see which ones you've selected. And then if you click them again, they'll go on top of what you did before. So it's very much like having cutouts of paper and then layering them on top of each other. Whatever you click last is going to be on top of everything else. So if I want to layer them up in a certain way, like this is kind of interesting, I might choose that and then choose this. Or I can turn this one off and then put it on top of that. And then if I want a little eye, I need to first make it and then put the others on top of that. Kind of make sense? You can layer up as many of those eyes as you want. Then you can move on to mouths or the lower section. And I might play with something like this. That's fun. And I can also add more. So if I want a little bit higher mouth, then I can make sure that the tongue goes on top of that. But then I have that, that extra lip on top. I don't see how that's helpful. So just play around with the shapes. Okay. 
I'm going to try putting the tongue on top of that. Just give me something. And then if I change my mind, I just turn it off. I put a shadow on my tongue. Okay. Next, we go to effects. And this is where it ends. This is a very simple emoji maker. So, do I want the cat to have glasses? Do I want the cat to be swearing? Do I want the cat to have hands? It's creepy. I want it to be a loving cat. Eh, I don't mind if it has some hearts around it. Maybe I keep that. I want you to choose one from each category, right? So you need a background, you need at least one set of eyes, one mouth, one effect. If you want to do more than that, go crazy. So if you're done, excellent. What we're going to do then, oh, you know what? Instead of a loving cat, because it's never leave your cat alone, I'm going to make it a sad cat. Oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I want that tier. It's a little bit better. Okay, so this kind of tells me the thing I'm going for. But this isn't my project. This is like my sketch. So there's two ways I want you to try saving this. One is to hit Command Plus until you're zoomed in so that your cat is as big or your emoji is as big as it can be on the screen without overlapping with anything else. Notice how as I zoom in, it's still perfectly sharp. That's because these are all vector shapes that we're using on this website. Now I'm going to make a screen grab of it. And a targeted screen grab, and this is in the directions, on a Mac is Command-Shift-4. It's those three keys. We've used them before. Command-Shift-4, and then I drag a box right around it. That's going to immediately save it as a PNG to my desktop. It takes a little bit while to process. I don't know why it takes longer with the new operating system, but it does. The other way I want you to save it is to zoom out. And then what you can do is in the upper right-hand corner of the site, you say export. And I want you to download it as a PNG. And then I want you to download it as an SVG. SVG uh, stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. We're not going to play with the SVG, but I want you to save it so you know that this is a vector project. Okay, I have just downloaded all of those. Let me clean up my desktop here. Close these. Download the PNG, download the SVG, and do the screen grab. There's a reason for all three. Okay, now within my class folder, I'm going to organize a bit. Remember, this is my class folder. It has my name, has this. The semester says Digital Art Morning. Open that up. I'm going to create a new folder. This will be for exercise two. We're going to be doing a lot in the class, so it helps to stay organized. Then I'm going to bring my reference image into it, my inspiration image. Then I'm going to go to Downloads, and I'm going to bring the PNG in. That's the one I downloaded from the website. Then I'm going to bring the SVG in, the one I downloaded from the website. And then I'm going to look on my desktop. This will have a gray background for the PNG that I did a screen grab of. Now, if we open both PNGs, just double click on them. They'll open in preview. That's the one from the website. Rasterized. This is my screen grab. Which one is higher quality? So if I zoom in on it, they're actually both rasterized because you can't save a PNG without it being rasterized. So if I zoom in on the eyeball, you can see that the screen grab I did is cleaner. Right? That means when you save a vector as a raster file like PNG or JPEG, it has to pick a resolution to be. And if it's from a website, it's going to be a low resolution because websites are low resolutions. But just to show you that we didn't make it as a PNG, we made it as a vector. You don't need to do this. I'm just going to do this. If I double click the SVG or if I open it with Adobe Illustrator, which we'll be using in the class for our vector assignments, 
you're going to see the components that make this up. 